This is video number two of my MURS MURS radio system that I'm using for my RV. In this episode, we're going to use external antennas just to see how much range we can get. And it's obvious you would not use these antennas all of the time in an RV situation. However, we do a lot of group camping, camping at rallies and shows, you know, that kind of thing. And in those situations, sometimes you're a couple miles away from one end of the vent to the other. For those few times that you need the extra range, that is what this is for. What I have here is a more specific ground plane base antenna with an adapter to go on to my 25 foot tall mast that I use for other antennas and even for flagpoles for that matter. As well as some coax, adapter cables, and so on. I'm also going to use a mobile mag mount antenna. So let's connect the base station antenna to the mast in the RV. Get that up 25 feet in the air. And then I'm going to drive around in the car until I get marginal signal and then I'll put the mobile antenna on top of the car and see if that improves it any and see how much farther I can get with it. I also want to make it easy to disassemble the antenna because of course all the stuff has to pack away. Here is the antenna pre-assembled and I've left one screw out for the ground plane because these normally go out like that. I'm thinking what I should do is get some thumb screws so that I can make this kind of a toolless assembly. This U-bolt is supposed to go into the mast. However, it's about an eighth inch too narrow to fit the mast. The mast is just a little bit too wide for this. So I had to buy an adapter and this adapter will fit on as so. And then this will wrap around the mast. However, this adapter was a little bit too large for the mast. So you can see a little bit of a bend here. What I did is I just bent these ears in a little bit so that it will connect to the mast. And when I assemble it all, you'll see what I mean. This is known as an omnidirectional whip antenna with its own ground plane. And let's cut those off. And we just need to secure the whip. If you're going to leave this on the RV for a couple days, I would put a surge suppressor on the coax. But I'm not going to leave it up that long. We're just going to test it. And I'm using RG8X coax, which is a fairly high performance 50 ohm coax. And I'm just going to now raise the antenna, but I need to move the camera. And so there we are, 25 feet in the air. We'll connect the radio and see how it works. This is a Redivis RT47 Moore's radio, and you need the RT47 because it has a removable antenna. This is an SMA female connector, and I have an adapter cable, which is an SMA male connector, to a PL259 female connector, which will mate with the RG58X coax. That's on the RV's antenna. So it's just a matter of connecting the antenna socket to the adapter. Then we plug the PL259 into the antenna. And that's all it takes to make the connection. Now, of course, you'll have to find a way to feed it inside the RV if that's what you want to do, but that's kind of up to you. For the vehicle antenna, we will be using a general purpose VHF mag mount antenna. While I could cut the antenna length specifically for the MERS frequencies, I think it's going to be close enough. This is called a mag mount, and it's designed to fit on top of your vehicle. And the steel body of your vehicle makes up the ground plane. So you could not set this on top of your RV unless the roof of your RV is made of metal, such as steel, as a magnet in the antenna must attach to the roof, and the metal is also required to establish the ground plane. As an alternative, you could probably just get a piece of steel, attach the mag mount to it, and it would probably work. And this uses the same type of adapter. To test the performance of the antenna configurations, we will perform three tests. The first test will be a baseline test using the two radios with their standard antennas. 
The second test consists of one radio connected to the fire stick Muir's base antenna on top of a 25 foot mast and the second radio still using its standard antenna. The third test consists of replacing the standard antenna on the mobile radio with a mag mount antenna attached to the roof of the vehicle to establish its ground plane. In all three tests, we drove our vehicle away from the base station. We checked in at half mile intervals and we completed the test when we could no longer make out what was being said. Background noise was acceptable as long as we could hear what the person was saying. Before we get into the test results, let's calculate the theoretical maximum distance we can expect. This theoretical maximum assumes a point-to-point -point or line-of-sight signal with no obstructions. The theoretical maximum distances using the radio's own antennas is 6.27 miles, with the fire stick Moore's base antenna that increased to 8.88 miles, and adding the mag mount antenna to the rooftop of the vehicle, we increased the signal to 11.16 miles under the most ideal of conditions. I took my camera in the vehicle for the test, but once you know it, the SD card was full, so I did not capture any video for the test. So how did we do? The actual distances we achieved with the radio antennas was about one mile, which pretty much agrees with the test we did in the Muir's radio review video. With the fire stick antenna, the range increased to about two miles, and with the Magmount mobile antenna, about two and a half miles. So why the big difference? Two factors, the line of sight distance and the terrain. We can easily calculate the line of sight distance to factor in the curvature of the earth. The square root of the combined antenna height of each radio multiplied by 1.42 will give us the distance limit to the earth being round. This assumes a flat terrain. When we factor in the curvature of the earth, the results are much lower than the theoretical maximum distances. And the final factor is the terrain. We did the test in the Midwest in a rural area with rolling hills, buildings, and lots of trees. This is by far the most limiting factor. If you're operating your radio over water or on flat terrain, I would expect better performance. I would be comfortable in calling the tests that I did the worst case scenario. So again, you may not need external antennas for your weekend campout, but if you're involved with a rally or something along those lines, this may be a good solution.